Hi guys, Nane here, and today I'm going to do a quick review of Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. So, for those of you who are keeping up to date, I did say in my last channel update that I wasn't necessarily going to be doing reviews, and that's still kind of true. I'm, I'm doing reviews when I feel like I've got something to say about the book, you know? So, I'm going to start with the blurb as it's super short. In a darkened room, a young man sits telling the macabre and eerie story of his life. The story of a vampire gifted with eternal life, cursed with an exquisite craving for human blood. So, I kind of have mixed feelings about this, I guess. As a general rule, I did enjoy this book. I don't know whether I'll necessarily be reading more in the series, because I know there are quite a few books now in the Vampire Chronicles series. I would potentially pick them up if I saw them in a charity shop or something like that but I'm, I wouldn't go out of my way to read them however I do think especially if you're interested in vampires or in the horror genre or anything like that then it's the kind of book that you kind of just need to read it's one of the staples I really liked the way that you could kind of see Rice's own take on vampire lore I thought the way that it was structured as an interview reminded me of Dracula. So Dracula is an epistolary novel. I think I said that right. I got close enough anyway, so we'll continue. And so a lot of it's written in the form of journals and letters and things like that. And I thought it was cool how this is in the form of an interview. So it's kind of different, but kind of the same as well. It's kind of a subtle nod to uh, Bram Stoker's books. Said kind of a lot there. I like the way it was a modern take on vampiricism. But equally, it's no longer modern because it was modern when Anne Rice wrote it. So it's kind of like this double approach to it where it, it feels modern, but at the same time it feels retro. And that made it really a pleasure to read. I'm going to go through and take a look at some of the bits I highlighted. To be honest, I think most of the things I highlighted were to do with Anne Rice's take on, you know, vampire lore. And so, for example, here, um, let me read this little exchange. So the vampire says... Let me say that when he'd finished speaking, no other decision was possible for me, and I pursued my course without a backward glance, except for one. Except for one? What? My last sunrise, said the vampire. That morning I was not yet a vampire, and I saw my last sunrise. I remember it completely, yet I do not think I remember any other sunrise before it. I remember the light came first to the tops of the French windows, a paling behind the lace curtains, and then a gleam growing brighter and brighter in patches among the leaves of the trees. Finally, the sun came through the windows themselves and the lace lay in shadows on the stone floor, and all over the form of my sister who was still sleeping, shadows of lace on the shawl over her shoulders and head. As soon as she was warm, she pushed the shawl away without awakening, and then the sun shone full on her eyes and she tightened her eyelids. Then it was gleaming on the table where she rested her head on her arms, and gleaming, blazing in the water on the pitcher. And I could feel it on my hands on the counterpane, and then on my face. I lay in the bed thinking about all the things the vampire had told me, and then it was that I said goodbye to the sunrise and went out to become a vampire. It was the last sunrise. I just really like that, the thought of the, the last sunrise when you've not quite turned but you know it's coming and so you kind of observe it and you observe it in a way that you never observed the sunrise before, you know. I don't think I've ever looked at the sun like that and I have a poem called Why I'm Like a Vampire. One, I can't come in unless you let me in. I must be asked to pass the threshold or I'll stand outside in the rain. We have another moment here uh, which I, I think is good again for the, the way that Rice has portrayed vampires. It would be a great book to use as a source if you were writing an essay or something like that about vampires. So, uh, I was drowsing, falling into weightlessness, and then Lestat pulled me back. He's dead, you idiot, he said with his characteristic charm and tact. You don't drink after they're dead. Understand that. Uh, you'll die if you do that, Lestat was saying. He'll suck you right down into death with him if you cling to him in death. And now you've drunk too much. Besides, you'll be ill. One thing I will say about Lestat, he's obviously an interesting character to read, to read about. I think that's how there are so many of the Vampire Chronicles books. I mean, Lestat has become an iconic vampire in his own right. One thing I wanted to mention is it reminded me of Rant by Chuck Polanyuk. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Polanyuk. Something like that. Anyway, it reminded me of Rant by him. And um, the reason for that is that in Rant, it's like an oral history of Rant, the character, but you never actually see Rant firsthand. It's always somebody talking about Rant. And it was just an interesting parallel here between, obviously, it's an interview with the vampire, but the vampire isn't Lestat, which I always assumed it was. I always assumed it was going to be an interview with Lestat. It's an interview with another vampire who's talking about Lestat, which I thought was interesting. 
I like as well the idea the vampire had a kind of fear of going to sleep basically because he was going into his coffin and he never knew what might happen. He might it might end in his death. For example, Lestat could have he, uh, for, well the interviewer says here, but how could he have killed you? He couldn't have exposed you to the light. He couldn't have stood it himself. That is true, but rising before me, he might have nailed my coffin shut or set it afire. The principal thing was, I didn't know what he might do and what he might know that I still did not know. But there was nothing to be done about it then. So he just had to sleep. I'm going to continue this exchange, actually, because there's some more of it that's interesting. But there was nothing to be done about it then, and with thoughts of the dead woman and child still in my brain and the sun rising, I had no energy left to argue with him and lay down to miserable dreams. You do dream, said the boy. Often, said the vampire. I wish sometimes that I did not. For such dreams, such long and clear dreams I never had as a mortal, and such twisted nightmares I never had either. In my early days, these dreams so absorbed me that often it seemed I fought waking as long as I could, and lay sometimes for hours thinking of these dreams until the night was half gone. And days by them I often wandered about, seeking to understand their meaning. They were in many ways as elusive as the dreams of mortals. I dreamed of my brother, for instance, that he was near me in some state between life and death, calling to me for help. And often I dreamed of Babette, and often, almost always, there was a great wasteland backdrop to my dreams. That wasteland of night I'd seen when cursed by Babette, as I told you. It was as if all figures walked and talked on that desolate home of my damned soul. I don't remember what I dreamed that day, perhaps because I remember too well what Lestat and I discussed the following evening. I see you're anxious for that too. But you guys, you're going to have to read the book if you want to find out what he's talking about there. Oops. Well, my sticky just tore the page. I like this little exchange here as well. Fire purifies, Claudia said. And I said, no, fire merely destroys. That's a great quote. This is another interesting bit about vampiricism as well. So, Louis, come after me, he whispered. Or maybe Louis. Probably Louis, because they're in France. I don't know, I haven't seen the movie. So, but anyway. And then on the, no and then, then on the ledge, he stopped. Even if you were to fall on the cobblestones there, he said, you would only be hurt for a while. You would heal so rapidly and so perfectly that in days you would show no sign of it, your bones healing as your skin heals. So let this knowledge free you to do what you can so easily do already. Climb down now. What can kill me? I asked. Again, he stopped. The destruction of your remains, he said. Don't you know this? Fire, dismemberment, the heat of the sun, nothing else. You can be scarred, yes, but you are resilient. You are immortal. We have another interesting thing here as well. Uh, if you just go out, said the other angrily, heaving a chunk of wood into the blaze, if you just hunt something other than these miserable animals. And he looked about himself in disgust. I saw then, in the shadows, the small furry bodies of several cats lying helter-skelter in the dust. A most remarkable thing, because a vampire can no more endure to be near his dead victims than any mammal can remain near any place where he has left his waste. And then we have this moment at the end which... I kind of thought, I, we have this moment at the end as well, which I kind of saw coming ju just because I thought it would kind of make sense. So at the end, the interviewer demands, he's like, turn me into a vampire now. And the vampire's like, after everything I've told you, you still want to be a vampire. And um, I just think that's very human. That was a very human thing for the interviewer to do. <laughs> So yeah, all in all, I did enjoy Interview with the Vampire. Rating time, I gave it a 3.75 out of 5. It was just under a 4 for me, because it did drag in a few places. But, I, I mean, I think it's, it's Anne Rice. You know, if you're a horror fan or you're interested in vampires, like I say, you need to just, you need to read some Anne Rice. And Interview with the Vampire is as good a place as any to start. So, uh, pretty happy with that and like I say I won't necessarily be going out of my way to read more Am Rice books but if I see them and I can get them cheap and how I normally get my books you know I mean I got this from a charity shop so they're, they're out there so I probably will pick up the odd one or two in the future we will see so yeah, there we have it. That's what I thought of Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought about it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.